within our Today in Senior Focus, a living will is actually a very simple document with one purpose, but you'd be amazed at some of the myths and misconceptions that are floating around about it. So here to clear it up is Shreveport attorney Kyle Moore, who specializes in elder law. So thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Let's talk a, lot of, a bit about a living will. What's the purpose? So uh, a living will gets often confused with your last will and testament, but a living will is an advanced directive is you leaving some instructions to your health uh, uh, power of attorney, health care power of attorney, that instructs them on what you choose for yourself when you get to the stage where you're having the physicians are having to make end of life measures for you. So it's just, um, and everything, that decision is so personal for each of us that we make those decisions and you want to sit down in a time well in advance of that so that you can make some serious choices and people have very strong beliefs whether or not they're for yourself for your potential health care religious beliefs so everybody comes at it from a different place and so what your living will is supposed to do is just to reflect what you want for yourself when that time comes is a living will interchangeable with a dnr Good question. I get that a lot. And a DNR and a living will are two completely different uh, documents. The do not resuscitate is a very specific document that is uh, entered as an order with your primary care physician after you've consulted with them about do you want to have that resuscitation if you have another uh, life event. So that, unlike a living will, where you can do that at any stage and hopefully when you're otherwise feeling healthy, a DNR is something where a primary care counsels you after you've been diagnosed with a terminal illness and you are likely to face some end of life measure in the future. Okay, going back to the living will, how complex does it have to be? Is it a big manifesto or can it be as simple as a couple of sentences? Well, again, this is where we'd like to personally tailor it to the client. So each individual, so if you have your, if your health care power of attorney is somebody who knows you very well, a spouse, a child that has known you and lived with you and knows what your wishes are, a, a living will can be very basic and just choosing between do I want this for end of life, do I want hydration and nutrition if I cannot uh, eat or drink on my own, or if I have very uh, specific uh, beliefs and that person does not know me very well, you would want a very uh, specific, you know, what do I want, IV fluids these type of hydration, this type of treatment. So it really depends on who is the person that you're going to count on to follow through with those wishes and, and letting them know that these are the things that are important for me. These are the things that um, I really believe about and then giving them the knowledge and information to help protect you in that time. So do they have to be a witness for the living will and do you have to have multiple witnesses? So again, the, the, there's no set form that has to make it enforceable. Really, it just needs to reflect your, your intention. And generally it can be uh, a lot of the hospitals provide these forms for their patients, uh, any doctor's office and have those. So anybody uh, can be a very standard form or it can be a handwritten directive. Uh, a lot of people get, there's all over the internet printing these off, but it really just needs to reflect what you want for yourself. Playing devil's advocate, what happens if you don't have a living will? Well, the, in the healthcare world that they will look to family members that whoever is going to make your healthcare choices for you, they ultimately will have to make these decisions. And so it's a heavy burden to make these type of serious end of life measure decisions. So we want those and alleviate that from those people so you can specifically say what you want. So um, if you don't have one, then the physicians are going to look to your family to make the decisions for you. Okay, some good information there. Thank you for sharing this with Absolutely. us today. We have learned a lot about this. Now you've cleared up a lot of the confusion that uh, folks have about living wills and we really appreciate you sharing your time. Absolutely.